Now comes the neat part. That's kind of, that's just basic family stuff. A few little per, uh, formulas and things. But here's what's the neat part that I want to do with the recursion uh, portion uh, for this series that Zach's been doing. Um, so let's go ahead and save this thing. And we're going to call this recursive tree one. Save it. Kind of write what I did earlier. And then we're going to make another version of it. Uh, so we're not actually you can't reference it into itself. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a save as. And we're going to go have two families. Call this uh, recursive tree two. So I'm going to have two families that are identical. The only thing different is the name of the file is different. And let's get the other one open here, here again. All right. There we go. And what I'm going to do here is the trick uh, that uh, I kind of figured out here a little while ago. Is what we're going to do is we're going to load cursor tree one into two, and we're going to stick it here and here. And I add here and here. So you can start to see kind of where this is going already. So we're going to just keep, we're going to add these um, branches that then branch off again. Uh, but one of the things I want to do, oh, you know what? I'm going to have to back up for a second. Let's go back up for a second. Let's get rid of two here for a second. One of the things you're going to need to do, and I should have done this from the beginning, is the shared. So I'm glad I had to back up and made a big deal out of this. Make sure that's unchecked, because if it is checked, you're not going to be able to nest more than once. And we want to be able to nest these things multiple times to get that branching pattern. So make sure that that shared is turned off, and then go ahead and save the family. And um, we'll actually have to do a save as back on top of the other one. And we'll go back to that nesting thing. Save as family. There we go. And then we need to open it back up. And get to the where is it? There we go. And like I said, we're gonna load it back into the families and back into itself. So from here to there, here to there, here to there. All right. One of the things I also want to do is I want to be able to the parameters of try themselves so that like the angle and the uh, proportion uh, ratio that it uh, changed earlier I want to be able those to in one family to drive the same parameters in the other one so let's select these since made all instances have to select all instances and for the trunk to branch ratio I'm gonna map that one map them to, to each other and I'm gonna let the bend angle in these uh, families be driven by the bend angle of the parent family. There we go. And then let's save that. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to load file number two into file number one. There we go. And we'll do the same thing. We'll pick from here to there, from here to there. And from here to there. All right, so you can kind of see what's going on here now. We're getting multiple branches. Um, if I didn't turn the shared off, I wouldn't have done not in this bar because it would said, "Hey, I'm referencing my referencing myself." So let's pick these instances, and we're going to do the same thing we did in the like we did with these other just a second ago. We're going to make the one family's parameters drive the other. There we go. All right, that's it. Now we've got these two set up. Let's save these things. So now that we've got them set up, that's the hardest part. Now with recursion, uh, recursion has depth. Um, it, it could go on forever. Uh, and you could get into an infinite loop where you just keep adding branches and branches and more branches. And it's like, well, at some point you got to end. In programming, uh, you usually say, well, do this 10 times. And it does it 10 times. Well, with Revit, with this, uh, with this method, you to do it multiple times all you have to do is just save load in the project and pick the, the family you have so I've got both of them open so I'm gonna load it I'm gonna load it into each into each other and this takes about I don't know maybe a couple minutes 
Um, you can see that it takes a little while. It's sitting there generating. Um, and that's really all you do. Is I didn't have now I don't have to touch the parameters. I'm done with the parameters. And you just load, keep loading the, just save the family, and then you load the project. Save the family, load the project, and you keep doing that alternate from one to two, two to one, one to two, two to one, and you do it as many times as you want branches. And the more times you do it, the more branches you get, just like you see here. And then the cool thing is you can um, change these uh, parameters of the, the family now. Or you can go back and change my tree branching and bend angle, and it'll change all of them. And this is where probably the API would be better to do this kind of a thing, because um, it does take a while to regenerate uh, when you do change these parameters. It took me, um, on this, I got a 2.4 gigahertz machine, it took me two minutes just to change the bend angle in there. Uh, your cook times may vary depending on your machine, but um, you do want to allow for some time to do those. Um, so I'm going to show you what some of these look like. I have a few that have already pre-baked, kind of like a cooking show. I've done these ahead of time. And let's see what it looks like if I change all these things to zero. So here's a, my pre-baked uh, tree that I made earlier, where everything's to zero. You can see some of these. So like in here you can see some of these are if the tree comes up and these just come out there's the angles from 0 up to 90. So you can see they're flat. And you get a tree that kind of looks like that. And if we let's take a look at 30 degrees what happens to the tree? degrees we get this kind of a look to it. Okay well that starts to look more like a tree more than a zero. All right. And let's see let's take another look at what 60 degrees looks like. All right well that's looking more like a tree there. Like crepe myrtle or something like that. And then let's take a look at maybe something a little more steeper 75. And it go to 90 and it'll look like it's just one stick. There you go. So that's it. And then, like I said, those uh, are driven by your my uh, bend angle and my proportion, where I can change these proportion from the trunk to the branches, stretch them out, um, make them go the other way, where they go from small to, to bigger. Um, so you could try different variations on those and try your own. Uh, this is a fairly simple one. We can actually put mass and make those extrusions or blends. Uh, where they go from bigger to smaller to make more of a thicker, but the stick figure is good for illustrating the purpose of how you nest one family into the other, that the third, the two families are identical, and you can kind of build on each other and get this recursive idea uh, in Revit without doing any programming. Granted, we did a little bit of formulas, not too bad, but that's really only because I, I made mine, I wanted a tree uh, that looked like this and had control over it. But the same method could be done with just blocks like a Jenga, so you can have one you know, set of three blocks that are one way, and then another one sitting on top of it that go the other way. And, you know, vary the height parameter, and just they'll stack as you go. You'll just save one on top of the other, and they'll stack. And that's really the recursive idea in Revit.